phases and keep their patience. The points won't come against you or may not come straight away. But if they keep their patience and build and build, I'm sure England will run out comfortable winners. And ultimately, you would like to see the likes of Ashton with a ball in hand and that back three uh, getting some time. Yeah, I think ultimately. But as, as Lawrence said, they need to dominate in the forwards. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, it. that's all they need to do. They need to do that first. If they do that, then the Ashtons and co will, will score the tries later in the game. But for me, for England, to, as I said, to progress in this tournament, they need a solid tight five, good loose forwards, nine and ten working well and getting field position. And Georgia won't be easy, but a five-day turnaround for them, uh, that's a tough schedule, isn't it? No, it's a tough schedule. I expect England to win comfortably, and uh, I expect one or two of the players to put their hand up for a spot in the quarterfinal. And Lawrence, feeling confident? I am. I'm feeling very confident. It's been a, it's been a tough week, but England... Uh, uh, seems to be bouncing back nicely. I'm very, you know, very strong team that they've named, uh, and there's some great opportunities for some of these players. Well, the smiles are on the faces of the <laughs> England fans at the moment. Uh, the dressing room door is about to open, and the action is poised to get underway. The rest and relaxation was certainly action-packed. Now, from England, we need organisation and authority. England against Georgia. We'll join Phil Vickery and Nick Mullins. Yep, it feels like the right time after all that's gone on this week and after the matches we've all been enjoying over the last 24 hours for England to perform, to begin to make their mark at this World Cup. Wonderful evening down at the tip of the South Island in Dunedin. And we're preparing for what's becoming now a a very familiar, if unconventional, welcome. They're rapidly becoming the stars of the show. Bidding to make life a bit more complicated for England. Here in the stadium, a tough, hard-nosed Georgian team who have their own agenda as well. Time for one last check on the teams, and England have their leader back. Lewis Moody's barely played this year. He'll be revved up even more than ever to make an impact and come through unscathed. James Haskell for the injured Nick Easter, a late change at eight. Ben Youngs and Toby Flood reunited at nine and ten. Shantaine Happy wears 13 ahead of Mike Tyndall. Major issue for Georgia will be fatigue just four days on from their opening game with Scotland. Richie Dixon's invited the vast majority of those who started in Invercargill to go to the well again. Their most capped player, scrum half, Irakli Abazaradza is their skipper. He'll steer a side that, purely in terms of caps, has more experience. In reserve, three England players who'll have every reason to be a little more nervy than usual. Alex Corbusiero, Matt Banahan, primed to play in the World Cup for the first time, while Wasp scrum half Joe Simpson is all set to make his test match debut. We flew over the snowy Southern Alps on our way down from the North Island yesterday. It's been a beautiful weekend in Dunedin, chilly but bright and sunny. Here are the anthems. for flags of St George this evening. Both countries share the same patron saint.
chapter two of England's World Cup after the break. Rugby World Cup 2011 coverage sponsored by IBM. Found a place full of charms, a magic world in my baby's arms. Soft embrace like satin lace A wondrous place Come and see how everything we do goes into everything we do. Rugby World Cup 2011 coverage sponsored by... Welcome back. Jonathan Kaplan, South African, 44-year-old from Cape Town at his fourth World Cup in charge. Steve Walsh and Chris Pollock, the touch judges. And a World Cup that's exploded into life this weekend is now expecting England to do likewise. Straight from the off, though, it's Dmitry Basilaya and the bulky Georgians who put them under immediate pressure. Happy, though, keen to run the ball. Armitage striding up midway between the 22 and the 10 metre line. Here goes Flood linking up with Young straight away. Matt Stevens goes in. Flood. Well kept in play by his opposite number, Kaviri Kashvili. Launches high. Well taken by Armitage. He was solid under the high ball. All evening a week ago, Youngs to Flood, lots of kicking early on from their own half. Keen to make Georgia play from depth. This is Toddler. Kept the ball in play. Scrum half is Irakli Abzaradzi, winning his 74th cap this evening. And drawing the penalty from England, an area Phil Vickery that they caught the long hour of the law mat uh, several times a week ago. Yeah, no, we, we said it pretty much. You know, England really need to get onside with the referee early. Jonathan Kaplan's been around for a long time. Not really a huge amount of pressure. England under, under no real pressure on the line, and they've given away an easy penalty to settle the nerves, not just of the Georgian team, but also of Jonathan Kaplan. Normally has a cultured left boot, but on that occasion, Kaviri Kashvili handed the ball straight back to England, a let-off for them. Flood and Foden will do the best to make them pay. Here goes to Alangi. England driving with some purpose over halfway through the skipper, Lewis Moody. Stevens quickly shifting the ball on. Finding Hartley. Armitage has been busy early on. Says, Haskell not expecting to start, but because Seaster has a sore back, he is. And now it's England's turn to shuffle back. Foden, safety first. Northampton fullback winning his 19th cap today. One of the liveliest operators last Saturday. England not hanging around with the short and line out. 
think England doing exactly the right thing, trying to keep the tempo of the game up, not let, let this Georgian team settle. Mistake from Basilaya. Simon Shaw on the charge up towards halfway. Break for England, and the try will be scored. And what a moment for Shantaine Happy. He's not everyone's cup of tea, but you talk to the coaches and they love him. And he's just got England up and running here in Dunedin. Great start for England, great start for Shantaine Happy. All came from the mistake from the high ball. And we've probably seen England play more rugby in the last two minutes than we saw all last weekend in total. Really quick pick and go. The Georgian team spreading out, worried about England's attack from wide. Shantaine Harpe, the easiest try I think he will score this season. And he's back on home turf. Born and bred in New Zealand, experiencing his first World Cup. And within the opening minutes, he has his first World Cup try. Try that was comfortably converted in front of the posts by Toby Flood. And England lead right from the off by seven points to nil. Murray Cashville with a high restart. Gathered in by Haskell. Here goes Tuolangi. Here goes Shaw again. Legs pumping, belying his age, but then he had the ball stolen from him by Kacharaba. Through Abzaradzi, the scrum half, Georgia can try and build something for themselves. Zibsi Badzi tackled in midfield. Shaw doing his level best to rectify the error, but they conceded the penalty. Taken quickly by Gorgodza, one of the superstars of Georgian rugby back home. Abzaradzi having some pace to it. This is Basilaya. Already prominent. Hinchigishvili. They are a tough, no-nonsense, nuggety bunch, the Georgians. They only know one way. Jabber, Greg Badza, keeps them moving. Here is Gorgodza. Having immediately scored the try. England now forced into some fairly intensive defence. Zaradza releasing the backs. He was held on to by Virikashvili and in the end... Yes. Held on to a little bit too long, spilt possession. And England and the likes of Tom Wood can draw breath. Philby. Well, we talked about England's uh, intent here today and looking for reaction. Have to take your hats off to the Georgians. Giving England some of their own medicine, carrying the ball really strongly. Sub, please. Playing multi-phase rugby. Ultimately, they're just failing at the end, running out of ideas. The Georgians looking tired, but their intent they've made very clear. They're not going to lie down here tonight. Yeah, they arrive here as the best team in Europe outside the Six Nations. If there was a, a Seven Nations, then Georgia would be in it. They retain the Nations Cup title, the second division, for the fourth year in a row. And they are forced into um, an early change in the second row. Zed Ganitz is off to get patched up. And Datanashvili is on temporarily. But they are a very, very handy outfit, and Richie Dixon has got them heading in the right direction. We can see why early on. Important time now for England. Talk about referee. Talk about dominating front five. First scrum of the Touch. game. Vital for England to set the tone, Pause. set the standard, Hager. and show Mr. Kaplan what they're made of. A little bit of a mess, and Georgia might profit from it through Zibzi Badza. Real chance for them, and they get the ball down. Machinelli over the line. 